Hello and welcome to the Sharp 600 brought to you by Covers.com and presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. I'm your host Jason Logan as we get you ready for week four in the end of September. I can't believe how fast this month went. It's been nuts. But uh, joining me on the time warp that is NFL betting is bookie turned professional better turned excellent sports gaming analyst. That's my man Todd Furman. Todd, welcome to week four. How you doing pal? I'm doing well, but uh, I should swear off backing Will Levis in any capacity going forward. Uh, he has been the bane of my existence. And Jason, I don't like to think of myself as clairvoyant as savant, but I thought that favorites could struggle in week three from a survivor standpoint. Mm. So I figured I'd zig when everybody else zagged, but I still ended up on Will Levis. So I guess that makes me the same caliber <sighs> jackass as everybody else that was out there. But I digress. Plenty of great games for us to break down in the week four slate. I'm, I'm actually on ten. I took Tennessee early in the week when it came out. I, I like, beyond Will Levis just handing over points, I like Tennessee's defense. I think their defense is really, really good. Uh, yep. Darren Wilson has a nice nice thing going there in Tennessee. They just can't hand over 22 points off of, you know, picks and <laughs> block punts and whatever other garbage uh, the, the other teams can do here. Um, to me... Uh, I will say week four is kind of a, a bit of a crossroads or a bit of a jumping off point where, you know, we got, we, we've got enough data to make some solid assumptions about teams and players and coaches going forward. And that means shedding some of the preseason misconceptions and kind of going with the product that we see on the, on the field. How do you treat week four? What are your thoughts heading into this one? You mentioned having more data points. And I think this is the week where you begin to try and connect the dots because mm -hmm. you've seen these teams play three different opponents so far. You try and figure out, okay, is one performance an outlier? Do we know more about these teams on the offensive or defensive side? And, and we'll get to one of those teams that I have some reservations about a little bit later in the show. Uh, but strength of schedule in the NFL over the course of 17 weeks typically corrects itself more so than college football. But early on in the campaign, this is where you get the disparities. You have inflated totals where you can go under. Mm -hmm. You have depressed numbers where you can go over. And maybe in the case of some teams, coaches that are on the hot seat even more so after poor performances on Monday Night Football, like one team in Northern Florida. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a nasty, nasty showing. But luckily, I mean, we talked about Will Levis and we talked about the Jaguars just not doing their what they need to do here. Uh, week three was a mixed bag for us. Our, the well dried up for the touchdown anytime props. We went with two tight ends. We had Kyle Pitts. I'm going to say pass interference in the end zone. <laughs> One and, yard short. And, get I, the I, piano off your back, Kyle Pitts. And you know what, though, Jason? Before you get to the other one, apparently the Freudian slip where I mentioned Drake London, that should have been who I went with. That should have been the guy. Yes, that's right. That's That was the first <laughs> time. Yeah, we had to. If we had a blooper reel, your blooper reel would have nailed it. Uh, I went with Sam Laporta, and the guy couldn't stay on the field. He came off the field, came on the field, went off the field, came on the field. Just it wasn't him. We did go two and four. We had the Bills team total over 25 and a half. That one, Good call was, there. That one was done by the first half. Uh, poor Jags. And then he also had the Lions uh, ATS with, with room to spare. So we're 9-9 nine and nine heading into week four. I think we're better than that, quite honestly. 100%. 100%. No excuses. It's all about what you've done for me lately. And the nice part is at 500, we can find a way to go 5-1 and one or 6-0 and oh this week and suddenly be playing with a bit of house money after our hot start to the campaign. Yeah. And, we're, and we're up with the touchdown anytime props. If you want to go play the units game, we're, we're up with the, with the touchdown anytime props. Uh, before we get to the beef of the week four schedule and our best bets for that, uh, I got to gotta do this, the standard spiel here. If you are listening to the Sharp 600 each week and you like what we're putting down, rate us, review us, like us, subscribe, do all those things on whatever it is you two to, to take us in each week. We like that. We appreciate that. We thank you for that. All right, 600 seconds. For the end of September, Dell hit the music. All right, we had three weeks of action here to sculpt the NFL awards futures. And we're seeing some players quickly jump up the board and put a gap between them and the field. Todd, I'm going to ask you with these award futures, do you want to bet the favorite or do you want to bet the field? So let's start with offensive rookie of the year. We're going to go Jaden Daniels. He's the favorite plus 145. Do you want to take him or do you want to take the field? I want to take the field. I think when you look at this rookie class, Jason, there are plenty of other capable candidates here, whether it's Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., the quarterbacks and Caleb Williams and mm -hmm. Bo Nix who could flash as well. Look, the whole country saw what Jaden Daniels could do in a primetime standalone spot. And I think that's why odds makers had to adjust I'll take the field and expect Jaden Daniels to come back to us a little bit. 
Yeah, I, I also like the field. The, the, the QBs have just such a, like a wider margin for error, and they're under the microscope so much more where the receivers can have an off day, and it's not necessarily their fault. So, uh, and, and Neighbors and Harrison Jr. are just fantastic talents. Let's look at Offensive Player of the Year, and Saquon Barkley is a plus 310 favorite. Do you want to take Saquon, or do you want to take the field? And look, he is a worthy favorite, given what he's meant to the Philadelphia offense, ripping off that huge carry against the Saints that gave them a puncher's chance to come back. Uh, as modest road underdogs. But this number just too short for me. I think when you look at the skill position players across the league, there's too many other capable bodies of getting into the race. I will take the field against Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I also like that too. You got guys like Justin Jefferson's making Sam Darnold look like Tom Brady out there. And uh, and then I, I like Brees Hall plus 1,500. That's a nice long shot. This is a running back who can catch and run and it's finding the end zone for the Jets. So yeah, I like the field too. Comeback player of the year, always uh, fun to look at. Aaron Rodgers plus 125 big fave or the field. Look, Aaron Rodgers may have to overcome some of that media stigma, not exactly beloved by media figures across the league. And he makes sense to be the short shot, but I think when you look at some of the other storylines brewing, I'll take the field here as well. I know the NFL changed the language a little bit on this award, Mm -hmm. which makes voting on it uh, a little bit more precarious than what it's been. Uh, But while Rodgers is a worthy favorite, I will take the field here that AR-12 doesn't get it done. I like Rodgers at this one. It's the New York bias. It's a big, big market. I think the league does want Aaron Rodgers to be good. And, and uh, as long as he's a serviceable QB for the Jets and they get to the playoffs, I think he's a shoe in uh, MVP. This one also mix. And I'll give you two. I'll give you Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. They're both, both plus 250 to win this award. Do you like those two guys? Or do you like the field to win MVP? Honestly, I'm amazed that Mahomes' odds from before the season have come down. What has he done to try and do that other than his overall pedigree? You can understand what Allen has done, basically putting this Buffalo offense on his back. And while I think he'll be in the discussion at the end of the season, I am not buying Allen Stock at the top of the market. He's a player I'd love to add to my portfolio, but this number just too short. I will take the field as we currently sit here heading into week four. Yeah, also in the field, Lamar Jackson plus 2,000 right now. I think there's a good buyback there. And I think if you're betting on Baltimore this week to to beat Buffalo and cover against Buffalo, you got to sprinkle a little Lamar MVP. And we look at Buffalo's schedule, they're at Baltimore. Uh, at Houston, at the Jets, Tennessee, and then at Seattle. Those are very good defenses. I think Josh Allen's going to be tested here come down the the, uh, next few weeks. Uh, We've also had some surprise results as well, too. Some 3-0 teams, 0-3 teams, good bets, bad bets, overs and unders. I wanted to ask you about these early season records and if they're going to hold up. So let's talk Steelers. 3-0 straight up, 3-0 ATS, 3-0 to the under. What happens first? Do they lose a game, fail to cover a spread, or play over a total? Uh, you know what? I think over could come as early as this weekend against the Indianapolis Colts. I know the Mike Tomlin road favorite under trend is exceptionally strong, but this Steelers team, they can hit a couple of big plays against this Colts defense. Maybe they give one up. I think they go over before they lose a game, but this is a tough, tough question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffalo's 3-0 and start. You got Baltimore this week. Are the Bills for real, or are we going to see them stumble? I think the Bills are for real. The demise of Western New York was a little bit premature, but I don't think they're as good or as prolific offensively as what we've seen over the first couple weeks. Playing Arizona, Miami, and Jacksonville, a perfect landing spot for an offense trying to identify their true alphas. Josh Allen, the real deal, but Buffalo will come back to earth a bit. Yeah, we mentioned that gauntlet of defenses that they're going to have to go through over the next few weeks. Jacksonville looked like dog do on Monday. Lawrence looks lost. The Jags are 0-3. The world is burning in Duval County. Any value, though, coming back on the Jags maybe later in the year? You know, there may be value on the Jags this week. I haven't gotten there yet, but the seven started to turn into six and a half. So I think it's a little bit of a market overreaction. But what I saw from Jacksonville, their unwillingness to change defensive philosophy against Josh Allen, continuing to go with man. And you mentioned it, Trevor Lawrence, just airmailing balls. There are a lot of red flags down there. Doug Peterson on the hot seat. But I don't think the Jags are as bad as what we've seen through the first three weeks. All right, last one. No surprise the Chiefs are winning games. They're 3-0, and but... They're a toe away from a loss to Baltimore, and they've got some favorable calls. They've got some bonehead flags against opponents as well, too. Is Cincy playing with fire here? You know, I think Kansas City will be just fine. They're going through trying to figure out what they have on the offensive side. They've dealt with some injuries. Travis Kelsey looks like he's 107, but the Chiefs do have a go-to wide receiver emerging in Rasheed Rice. They'll figure out their backfield situation. The defense will get the ship righted, and Kansas City will shock me if you stop me if you heard this before. Shockingly, be in the mix to win the AFC yet again for the 37th year in a row. Way to go out on a limb. That's a that's a that's a stretch, but we'll see, right? Hey. 
Got to look dangerously sometimes. <laughs> That's right. Thursday night football, we got my Cowboys, which I'm ashamed to say, taking on the Giants. Line open five and a half. It dropped as low as four. It's back to five and a half. Todd, any thoughts for Thursday night football? Any bets on the go? This Giants offense uh, starting to get things figured out a little yeah. bit, and suddenly that loss in week one to the Vikings doesn't look so bad. The fact that they were able to keep the commanders to field goals instead of touchdowns yeah. looks a little bit better. Uh, but this is a tough, tough spot for them. I look at this total here, and I think 43 and a half, 44, there is some wiggle room to go over. It hasn't made my card yet, but you're not getting me to go under with the Cowboys defensively, given what we've seen from them through the first three weeks. Yeah, I, I'm actually on Giants plus five and a half, and it's more this Dallas defense. Under Mike Zimmer, this is not the same unit. I think Dan Quinn's departure, it shook things up in the locker room. They just, they don't have their heart anymore. They're not the same disruptive defense. And like you mentioned, too, the Giants coming off probably their best two-way showing in a long, long, long time. Neighbors looks like the real deal. I think they're going to be able to attack what is a soft front seven for Dallas. They're going to be able to run the ball. Daniel Jones is going to have those plays where he's breaking out and running around. I just I don't think Dallas wants to be there. I've seen them quit the last two weeks. And then the offense beyond Dak and CD, that's yeah. it. That's it's, really, it's lean. really it. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, I and think, Jake Ferguson working around that, you know, sprained MCL. He looks like a shell of himself, too. Yeah, plus five and a half just seems a little too much for a Dallas team. That is really overvalued. And if you dig into those numbers, they are a bad team right now. Touchdown anytime props at FanDuel Sportsbook. Todd, who do you like to score that tutty this week? I mean, look, everyone, Jason, wants to talk about the demise of the tight end. And Kyle Pitts didn't do me any favors coming up one yard short last week. But you know what? I am not going to be dissuaded from doing that. I'm taking Mark Andrews, the bane of every fantasy manager's existence, at least through the first three weeks. I think when you look at the injuries the Bills are dealing with on defense, Lamar is going to target the big fella, and we are finally getting six on Sunday Night Football. All right, I'm going to go to a guy that you picked the score a touchdown a couple weeks ago. He didn't get in. He's getting in on Thursday night, and that's Daniel Jones, QB for the Giants, plus 240. Beyond the design runs, he's going to be under pressure. This defense for Dallas still likes to blitz, still likes to get after the quarterback. He's great on those tuck and takes. We look at Dallas. They've already given up two touchdowns to, to quarterbacks already. Lamar Jackson ran one in last week. Derek Carr snuck one in too. I think Neighbors draws a lot of attention in the red zone. Daniel Jones is going to have to kind of panic, freestyle, run one in, and score one on Thursday night football. Plus 240. Two minutes real time, and that means our best bets for week four. I'm going with the Miami Dolphins team total under 18 and a half. It's a minus 106. Miami enters Monday Night Football with a mess at quarterback. Is it Tim Boyle? Is it Taylor, Tyler Huntley? Whoever it is, they got to pick up this McDaniels playbook pretty quick. And they're playing against a very good Titans defense, much better than people think. They've given up 22 points that have nothing to do with defense. You look at the advanced metrics, Tennessee ranking just outside of that top 10 in terms of EPA and success rate. I like him to, to shut this down. Miami's going to have to run a lot, going to go real slow with the pre-snap motion. Everything's short under their team total. You know, I had a couple of totals queued up. One of them got beat up pretty early in the week, so I had to nix that from the list. And we'll get to one of the totals still very much in range. But I'll go with the side. And everyone saw the commanders. They didn't punt for the second straight week. They are the talk of the town. Jaden Daniels, as we talked about earlier in the show, now the favorite to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Short week. Back-to-back -back road games against an Arizona team that looked anemic offensively. Cliff Kingsbury revenge game. So, Jason, you of course know what I'm doing. I'm laying the points here with the home team. I'm taking Arizona at minus three and a half. We might be twinning. Let's hope we're winning this week. I'm going with Arizona first quarter minus a half point. It's plus 102 out there. There's some weird pricing on this one. One and a half. You're seeing some money lines on the first quarter as hot as minus 160. I like Arizona here. They're the fastest starting team. They scored 28 points, given up only seven in first quarters. We see the Commanders. They haven't led after seven. And like you said, second straight road game, short week, letdown spot after the big upset over Cincinnati. I like Arizona come out, punch them in the mouth, and cover that first quarter spread. Monday night football, we have a twin bill yet again. And I'm going to go to the Lions and Seahawks going under the total at 47 when I look at this Lions offense, you mentioned Sam Laporta. We're not sure if he's going to go. Frank Ragnow, a long shot along that offensive line. Mike McDaniel did a tremendous job. Mike McDonald, McDaniel, I can't ever get him straight. Did a tremendous job confusing Jared Goff last year on the road when he was with the Baltimore Ravens. I think the more of that can continue. Look for Detroit to run the ball. I think Seattle's got some concerns along the offensive line. I'm going under the total points at a premium. All right. I have Seattle in the point plus four and a half this week. So I kind of think that jibes with what we're getting there in Ford Field. 23-20. Let's get out of Dodge. Help my Lions win total. You get the cover. The game stays under. And actually, now that I think about it, I have both teams over their win total. So as long as it doesn't end in a tie, 
Uh, I'm happy with that. That would be a flashing green result. Everyone would be a winner on that one. All right, that is a wrap on the week four edition of the Sharp 600 podcast. A big thanks to Todd. A big thanks to Dell behind the scenes. A big thanks to FanDuel Sportsbook. And of course, a big thank you to you for tuning in, listening, watching, whatever it is you do to take us in each week. A reminder, please rate and review the podcast when you get a couple seconds. We appreciate that. Todd, any parting words for week four? You know, I think this is where rubber starts to meet the road. I mean, the talk will be about those big underdogs all covering. We know that odds makers have made wholesale adjustments. And this is where you start to see the separation of the good teams and the bad teams. But I would warn people, don't look at the win-loss records. All those schedules haven't been created equally. This is the time of year from weeks four through six where you start to see a little bit of that separation. And that strength of schedule disparity can create all sorts of profitable opportunities for us. All right, great insights there, pal. We will be back next week for week five. Believe it or not, it's moving. Until then, best of luck with your bets. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states or 18 plus and present in D.C. Full price of NFL Sunday ticket will be automatically charged seasonally after free trial. No refunds. Terms, restrictions, and embargoes apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut or visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York.